Yo, hey guys, just before this video starts, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you that have been watching my videos. Uh, even though I've been part of YouTube for a long time and I've uploaded a lot of videos in the past, I've never really tried to, you know, grow my channel, but I've just started uh, recently, you know, uploading this content uh, just as a hobby. It started off as a hobby, you know, and it's uh, it's taken off okay, I suppose, you know, I've got over 100 subscribers now, uh, made over 10,000 views, and, and, you know, I, I can't complain with that at all. Um, you know, I've made a small community with, uh, you know, people that regularly comment on my videos. So, you know, I appreciate that heaps. Um, what I want to do is, is if I, you know, if I continue this, which I, I really want to continue this, um, and see where it goes. If, if I get a bit bigger, you know, I want to start doing giveaways, like, you know, giving back to the people that actually watch my channel. Um, I see a lot of people, um, like bigger YouTubers doing giveaways, but, um, people that are, you know, growing and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, that have just started sort of in the last like year or whatever i don't see them um you know like doing enough for their for their viewers so what i want to do is you know since i i do work full time this isn't my main my main source of uh, not that i'm earning any money from this or anything like that but um you know so i do earn income outside of this and i i really want to you know do giveaways and, and you know give back to the people that are actually watching my videos so and it's just it's just all about you know having fun and, and being being a good you know being a good person to, to the people that are watching my videos you know so um i'll start that maybe in the future when i get a bit bigger and uh, you know a few more people are commenting on my videos and liking them and subscribing and whatnot but uh yeah i just want to say thank you and you know i do have plans for the future with this and you know hopefully you guys will, will continue to watch my videos and support me with this so anyway i won't hold you guys up we'll get started in the video yo what's up guys you've got lightning here back at you guys with another video this time uh, we're playing a rally in the top lane with Vissing Olaf. Uh, so this video is more about how to beat your your harder matchups. And <clears throat> this guy made a, quite a lot of early uh, mistakes. Uh, he was trying to use his early game power over me to to try and um, you know, make his statement in the lane and, and and push me off minions level one. But he made a really big mistake. I've got the runes and masteries on the screen for you. Um, the lane's starting, so I'm just letting him push it in. Um, cause I know, I don't want to trade with him really at level one and two. Um, he'll probably start as X. Uh, I think he does start as X in, in this game here. Um, just use my E to get that minion. And then he starts using his axes and going balls deep at me. I don't know why. Um, my, my next wave is coming. And so I just activate my corrupting potion and start attacking him and stun him, right? So at this point right here, he's used two thirds of his mana pool and taken half of his damage. And he's had to use, uh, how many Corrupting Potion stacks has he used, okay? So he's used, we can check here. He's used two of them, so I've got, I've got one extra stack of, of my potion uh, up on him, right? So his level one trade, which he didn't win, cost him two Corrupting Potion stacks. And now all I have to do is just survive the next couple of levels and then I can, I can fight him. But then I see Jarvan's coming, I'm thinking, wow, this is actually a pretty good opportunity because... Um, I don't think this Olaf's very good. So Jarvan's really smart. He walked up to him, W'd for the slow, and got the red buff slow. And then when Olaf flashes away, that's when he does his EQ combo. So that was like, <clears throat> that was a perfectly executed gank on the Jarvan side, right? And that's all due to the fact that the Olaf decided to trade level 1 with me instead of pushing the, the, the wave in. He, Olaf could have pushed the wave when it was here, pushed it right into my tower. And then he wouldn't have had to, um, you know, be in this position. And then he could have warded. I uh, see Jarvan's invaded here. I don't know if that was a great move from Jarvan since he had already got his level 3. But, uh, I mean, after he's done the, his three camps and then come top for a gank. I don't think it's a good move to invade his red. I don't know why you would because Xin Zhao, you know, he's a pretty quick jungler. And he generally stays pretty healthy in the jungle. So I didn't really agree with that, but... That's fine. Did Olaf get that kill? Yeah, so Olaf got the kill, right? But, um, you know, he's only got 7 CS. He comes back to lane with double buffs. But I'm a level ahead, right? So I take the opportunity, um, to, to sort of, I want, I want to try and fight him here, right? So, um, I've just hit my level 4. He's just hit level 3. So I'm a level up. Level 4 is my sweet spot, right? So, in this matchup, if I, if I don't get a gank, I will fight level 4. And then just like that, he dies. Because I'm a level ahead, for starters. He has double buffs, but when I'm a level ahead, that doesn't mean shit. Um, level 4 is generally a pretty decent level for Aurelia. Um, so if you're one of these matchups where you get wrecked, like level 1 and 2, um, 
generally by champions wow, like like Trindamir or Olaf, that's a good example. Um, level four is generally just sweet spot. So level four, definitely when I when I try and fight, if I want to fight, um, yeah, I'll always try and save it for level four. And that was just the perfect situation for me, and the worst one for him. I don't think he uh, respected my damage at all, and that's his. Pro that's that's really a big mistake from him because right now he's lost the lane. If we go like this. Uh, we see the gold. I'm 500 gold ahead, and <clears throat> he's only got 11, 12 CS, right? So he comes to lane with a with the phage components. I come back with a full phage and double buffs, so that I just pressure him. Look, I've taken 80% of his health as soon as he's come back to lane, right? Like <laughs> that's how bad you can you can win lane against like an Olaf or any champion for that matter, especially because Olaf has no mobility and he. He can't, he can't sit there and Q farm with his axe, because he can't, if he, see like this, he can't pick it up, so he doesn't get the cooldown. So he, and also his mana pool isn't big enough, and his Q is so mana intensive, right? So he can't just sit there throwing Qs out, he's going to run and run Oom. And he, it's just not, it's just not good for him. He needs to get his jungler up here and push this lane, and that's what he needs to do. Uh, to get it to rebound off my tower, and then um, reset in the middle. But at the moment, you can see his lane is pushing to me, and I'm just letting it push. I'm going to keep growing my CS lead. He's on 16 CS to my 39. That's that's huge. I mean, to lose a matchup this early in the game um, by this much is, is quite big, right? So all I'm going to do is just let the CS push into me. I can see Jarvan coming up for another gank, and I'm just sort of trying to bait him into using all his abilities to, to farm. And I use my ult to... Um, to, to get to a I mean I don't think I got my Q reset no I didn't get my Q reset I, I didn't do that correctly unfortunately but I was able to um, you know get get the slow off on Olaf and then Jarvan come for the gank did he take the kill yeah so he took the kill that's absolutely fine because I'm so far ahead and Jarvan if he if my jungler gets more gold and we sh we share the gold um, that, that's always good you know because you don't want to have um, I mean it's always good to get more gold for your team um, through through your own you know actions but um, to have all the gold on one player is generally generally not not good you know because if that one player dies then the rest of your team can't really do shit so the fact that Jarvan took the kill I'm not even worried because I've already got a couple of kills and I've got enough gold at the moment so for Jarvan to get some more gold that really that really helps him out as well and I'm fine right now okay so Olaf he couldn't even get his phage he had to get boots now I'm gonna back what am I gonna get I'm probably gonna get Sheen off this or do I get Ninja Tabi I don't know what I buy here but when I'm this far ahead, I, I, Sheen isn't a bad bad choice at all. What do I buy? I'm taking too long to buy. So I get the Ninja Tabi anyway. This way, I've got my health, I've got my armor, and he... Olaf can't kill me anymore. He's he's basically fucked his chance of coming back in this lane at all. So, with the, with the Ninja Tabi, since they have a Zinzal jungle, um, the Ninja, Ninja Tabi is not a bad buy at all, because I guess if they wanted to shut me down, they could. If Zinzao came top and then, you know, um, Olaf altered or something, you know, they, they could probably still kill me. But with the Ninja Tabi, <coughs> instead of getting that extra um, damage through Sheen, <coughs> at least this way I've got the survivability just in case. It's sort of, I wouldn't say it's a, the, you know, the pussy way of winning the lane, but it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a safe way. Rather than just going full balls deep damage, you know, you get the Ninja Tabi just to guarantee that you're not going to die um, even to a gank, you know, so. But this way... I've still got enough resistance and damage to fight Olaf. Unfortunately, he roams. I did ping the shit out of it. I pinged it, honestly, and then, um, unfortunately, they didn't react. So that's when I just decided to keep, to push the lane. And they decide to push mid tower. I don't know if that's the case. So they get the mid tower. So really bad for us, right? So I, I just push this as much as I can. I get, I get his TP. Um, but the fact that they got the mid tower of something that shouldn't have happened, uh, like Ari was just standing in the middle of the fucking lane and I was, was pinging, back pinging her and everything and then she just stands there and then Olaf comes and Zin comes and she dies. Uh, not ideal for us but uh, I know I'm so far ahead, uh, how much gold am I hit by? Okay so I'm, um, see Olaf's caught up, see he got three kills, he's caught up in gold. He's only 300 gold behind now even though I'm, um, you know, double his CS basically. So because, because of other people's mistakes and even though I was spam pinging, you know, um, when, you're, when you're up top, um, you know, what, what else what else can you do I mean you, I couldn't really TP uh, at that point but um, you know the most you can do if you, if you spam ping your team and they don't get back what else can you do you know but at least I tried right so 
Um, unfortunately, let's put Olaf back in the game. Um, yeah, he's pinging um, Rift Herald here, but... So I do come and help him. Uh, I leave the wave. I just got it off my tower, so at least they don't get the Rift Herald. Oh, he's here as well. Zin, I don't know what the hell he was doing here, but... Not a good, not a good um, decision by him. Because he's not tanky, right? He's going for Blood Razor, isn't he? Yeah, so he's... Oh, he's going for... Unless like he's going for like a, um, like a Titanic or something like that. So anyway, based off his bad decision to go in on the Jarvan, um, seeing as I'm actually so far ahead still, I, even though the Olaf has caught up a little bit, I'm still far ahead, like further ahead than anyone else in this game, right? So uh, for him to go in on the Jarvan there really cost him the, the Rift Herald. <laughs> um, even though the Syndra was coming, already got the really good two-man ult, and that just basically won us the fight. So now I get a free Rift Herald, which is really good. And then they ping... They typing in chat, bring, come in, come in, you just get the mid tower. But I'd rather just like them just get the mid tower. I would rather just come up here, push Olaf in, get this fucking top tower. But that's okay. I mean, with this top tower, the Rift Hero will kill us in one shot. And then we've almost got the mid tower before we <laughs> I've just summoned the Rift Hero. But that's okay. Like, at least I've helped mid lane. Ori's got an open lane to, to roam and do whatever, right? And ward, deep, get deep wards or whatever. Gives us a bit more map pressure. I know I can always get this tower because Olaf's still not as strong as me, right? He's only got he's, he hasn't he hasn't gone back to buy. He's got he's sitting on 2.5k gold. I'm sitting on 1300, but now because of that tower, you know, I'm I'm almost a thousand gold ahead, which is really good for me. So I think once I back, I'll be able to get my Triforce. We'll be close to it. But as soon as I get that Triforce, you know, I think that's time to get the tower, um, <clears throat> say goodbye to Olaf, and and then try and snowball the game, you know. So. If we look at their team, they've got Syndra, MF, and Zyra. So if I get onto any one of them, well, I mean, if Syndra has her, um, her E up, and she can stun me and push me away, that's a little bit different, because, um, provided I don't use my Q to engage on her, I can always re-engage if she, if she uses her E to push me away. But the other two, like MF, Zyra, if I get on them and stun them, um, I don't think they can really get away. I mean, Zyra can get a stun on me, but uh, I think by the time she gets a stun on me after she, I stun her, uh, she's dead. She's too squishy. Ivory dies again. She has no tower, and she's sitting up here. You know, Zin has Ghost. I, I don't know if you guys looked at that, but Zin has Ghost. So he can come from here when you don't know, fuck her up. So <clears throat> really bad positioning by her. I think she died quite a few times. Oh, not, not she's not dying that much, but and she's out farming Syndra, so that's really good. So even though she's died a couple of times, she's still ahead of her laner. But, but still, it's not ideal for her to, you know, be giving kills away. So... This game, I sort of thought I had to carry a bit, just because of the decisions of my laners. Bot lane's not doing too bad, Kate's died a few times, but that, that early Zyra pressure can really fuck you up, you know? I mean, when I play bot, um, even when I used to play support a lot, uh, Zyra would just, ugh, fuck, absolutely monster me. Um, but now she's got a little bit of nerfs and, and things like that. I, I like Lulu against Zyra because with Lulu you can auto attack her plants and they kill them in one hit. I'm pretty sure they kill them in one hit now. Just like the Malzahar um, W minion, uh, Voidlings. So that's pretty good. That's why I like Lulu even though she got like a bit of a nerf. But that's okay. <coughs> so anyway, I've got this tower now. So we're a bit further ahead in the game now, which is really good. We've got the mid tower, we've got the top tower. And now since I've got my... I've got my Triforce components, I can back and get my Triforce, and then I'll probably go into a Titanic Hydra. Um, the Olaf true damage and the Zin, um, along with, you know, all their uh, mixed damage, um, is, is really good, so um, getting that, all that early health is going to be pretty effective versus the team. <coughs> See how Olaf's stuck here, he's level 9, I'm level 11, and he's only got his, he went for a dead man's early, he, he uh, abandoned the phage. But since I'm putting so much pressure up top, uh, you know, my team's able to get a free dragon, which is really good. Zin's top. I don't know if I get to back here. No, I don't. I just sit in the bush. Stun him as soon as he comes in there. I can walk away. He smites me and I walk away for free. So that was really good. Uh, see, okay, I'm not I'm not maxing E. I thought I was maxing E. But I'm not I'm not maxing E. The reason I'm not maxing E is because uh, once you get past level 6 uh, and you stun Olaf, he's just going to ult anyway. So <clears throat> I figure it's best to have that extra mobility and, and burst with the Q. Um, so that's why I don't max E versus Olaf. I just don't see the point after level six when, uh, you know, he's gonna be, he's gonna be getting out of all your CC anyway. Same as same as the gangplank matchup. That's why I just max Q versus gangplank. Uh, you can see everyone's pinging here because Olive's in the river, so I go down here and check it out. I think if anyone dove on me or anything, uh, I'd just be able to kill them. So, because <clears throat> what did I buy? 
Uh, so I'm 302, 6.5k gold. So I'm, even, I'm furthering my lead ahead of the Olaf. And even though the Olaf's a hard matchup for Aurelia generally, um, you know, that one play that he made at the start, <laughs> fucking up, like using all of his mana on, on one little trade that he lost, you know, <laughs> it really fucked him up, man. Like, as soon as he did that, I sort of knew the lane was over. Even though Jarvan ganked and we got a kill, um, you know, I sort of knew the lane was over. And then Olaf roamed, he got three kills, and, you know, he still couldn't contest me, which is really good. Uh, here we just get the tower. Olaf's like, oh, I want to save the tower. But then Jarvan goes in. See, Olaf ults. I flash. That was... I don't know why I flashed, actually. Um, that was a really bad... Um, <laughs> that was a really bad decision. And, you know, things like that happen, but, you know, we just take it on the chin and move on. It was a bad flash. If I had my abilities up, maybe I would have got him. Yeah, just putting more pressure on him. I think it's better to just attack the tower. I don't, he was already... He was already zoned out with... He was low enough health anyway, so... It was probably better for me to just to attack the tower. So it was pretty pointless for me to do that. So what items do I have? You know, I've got my Triforce, got a couple of long swords and re uh, rejuvenation bead. Feeling pretty strong right now. So I know I can just go in and team fight these guys and just destroy them. And, you know, I want to have a bit of fun and kill some people. My team starts ping me back on me. But see, see the difference in, um, you know, when you're so when you're that far ahead, um, see the difference in what you can do. Like we can push down at 17, 18 minutes, we can push down their inhib uh, for free, and they they can't even stop us. You know, um, it's just the power of um, being ahead in that early game. Like Jarvan's, see, imagine if Jarvan didn't take that kill, and he didn't get that 300 gold, and he didn't get to finish, um, maybe his his team at, maybe he didn't get to get his team at. And then he got into a fight with, um, you know, Zin Zhao and Zin Zhao won the fight. You know, the game could have turned so much. Just little things like that. And saying that if I got the kill when Jarvan came top the second time, if I got the kill, you know, I, I was I was still ahead. I might, have, I might have got my Triforce earlier, but it wouldn't have really affected the game. But with Jarvan, you know, being able to overpower the Zin Zhao um, and, and be, be a factor of, in, in counter ganking, you know, and being able to dive bot lane and things like that with his ult, uh, I think that's more effective in the game than just for me to get just another couple of hundred gold, you know? Because I'm already rich enough. Bro, this MF will fucking shred, man. Holy shit. Yeah, I couldn't believe it took me down so low, man. Like, that did like fucking 1400 damage or something. Along with like the Zyra plants, but that's okay. Oh, uh, you can see Ori and Jarvan coming down, the, um, you know, uh, behind them. So at this point we just go half balls deep. Or he goes balls deep with the flash ult. Fucking crazy. But I'm just attacking the tower because I know that this is the most important thing, right? This gives us the gold. Um, this gives us the you know progress in the game to get this tower. The opportunity to get this tower. We've already got the top in hub, so being down here is all we need to do right now because they have to answer this, right? These supermen is just gonna fucking storm straight in here. So all we have to do is sit here and attack this tower. It's quite it's quite easy, really. Like once once you get to you know higher elo, I, I I'm finding. That is since I'm matching with like high plats and like um well not really not really diamonds at the moment because I'm still low plat but um now that I'm matching with higher players now that I've actually started climbing in this season um games are getting a lot more easier especially when you get ahead and people know a bit more about what to do like there's no point in us being here just let that push and this is the safe way of finishing the game right what we have to do is sit down here keep pushing this and let this do its own thing right because it's almost gonna kill MF can't stop this right you know these things are gonna eat through this tower. So, I mean, there's no minion wave here, so we go straight to mid, right? And we can get this tower for free so easily. There's no way they can stop us, really. And if they try and stop us, you know, like, we just kill them. <clears throat> and I'm tanking right now, so I want to get out of there. And then the other minion wave's on its way. But see, if they come to answer this, in about 10 seconds, this is going to be at the tower. Maybe not 10 seconds. Yeah, like 10 seconds. Oh, okay, not quite. But, you know, so they have to answer this eventually. They have to send someone back. Syndra, she's going to have to answer this. So, they disengage, they don't even disengage with Syndra. Jarvan just goes absolutely fucking ham. And I get the kill on him here. Olaf's chasing down that Jarvan, doesn't he? Nah, we kill him. This thing, with, when Olaf ults, you just gotta focus him, and go balls deep on him. I make a mistake here, this is so greedy, I just shouldn't... I just shouldn't be there. I should've just backed off. Okay, they surrendered anyway. So see how the game just snowballed out of control based off a couple of things, you know, um, Olaf making that mistake at level 1. And then 
Jarvan ganking at level three. Well, I was still level two actually, but um, you know, and then ganking again, taking the kill on another another gank, and then me just being knowing my champion, knowing the matchup, and knowing that if I get ahead level two like I did, uh, I can take over the game, which I did. I mean, everyone played well. Like you know, even Ari got caught out a couple of times, and she you know didn't play too good at the start. And Kate, Kate actually got dicked, you know, she got fucked up. I thought she was, wasn't doing too bad, but she actually got, like, fucking wrecked. Um, you know, so based based off that, you know, the, the jungler gank coming top and, you know, me knowing how to play the game or play play my champion versus versus the Olaf, who's generally quite hard versus Aurelia. Um, just because it was true damage is an easy, is easy trading. You walk up to him and he ease you and chucks axe through you. And, you know, it chunks you for, like, 300 damage or something, you know. Uh, it's quite a hard matchup, generally, but... I just wanted to point out when when they make mistakes like this, don't be scared. It's like, you know, if a Riven uses two Qs to get to you and then uses a third Q and then keeps trying to auto attack you at level one right in your minions, don't be scared of her. She'll chunk you, but then what she got after that, nothing. And so you can just stun her and then keep auto attacking her and your minions. Same with this Olaf, you know. He dove me. He got me, he got me far away from my minions and then I sort of tried to keep him there. Stunned him, started auto attacking him right at level one. And then, you know, at that point I knew I knew the lane was over because I knew the Olaf wasn't very good. And he burnt almost all of his mana pool just to try and get win a trade. When he he didn't have to do anything, he just had to push for level two and then use his EQ to sort of, you know, get ahead with through, you know, at level two. But he didn't do that. So yeah, based based off a few things how I expect the matchup to be played by the opposition, um, I was able to determine that, you know, I, I can win this matchup quite easily because um the Olaf isn't very good. But anyway, guys, that concludes this video. I just wanted to show that off because um, I know some people struggle with Olaf, and even though I got a gank, uh, at least we could point out his mistakes and, and the things that can uh, contributed towards uh, you know me winning the lane and being able to run away with the game with the with the Jarvan, you know. So anyway, I hope you guys like that. I hope I explained things clearly. And if you liked it, drop it a like. Um, and if you like my content, you want to see some more, uh, give us a subscribe. But anyway, I'll uh, leave it here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah. yeah.